Dave, I, I love that the movie started with the Aqua Teens, you know, all separated because you always thought that Frylock would just snap one day and leave that insanity behind. So it was very interesting to see that fallout. Uh, what really, you know, made you want to start the film that way? Well, I think we were, I mean, yeah, it, yeah, it's great. You, you watch the whole series and you're like, why didn't Frylock just move? <laughs> so we had a built-in premise, right? He finally gets smart and does move. Yeah, and Matt, you know, it's kind of risky to not have the crew really reunited until 45 minutes into the movie. Uh, how, how did you know it would work keeping them kind of separated and, you know, m making that payoff uh, really work later on? Well, because I feel like somehow the audience knows that they're all at, were at one time a group and it's just, it's more of a, this journey for Frylock. Um, plus Dave and I went into the future and discovered that this idea would work and we saw the movie before we made it and we came back and continued to write it so uh luckily we have a time machine so that helped with a lot of making uh, the making of this movie yeah you can't beat a time machine for sure and and dave yeah. you know the episodes of the show are 11 minutes obviously this is 76 minutes so what, what were the biggest challenges in crafting one continuous story that has so many different beats and, and sustains itself for, you know, a full movie length. Well, I think we had to find those other 65 minutes. <laughs> Fortunately, yeah. though, our scripts are usually 76 uh, minutes long, and then we have to cut them down to a quarter hour. So we're very used to writing at that length. Uh, but then we're told by um, the uh, master control that, that 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 the show can't air unless it's 11 minutes or they're just going to cut to the Wendy's commercial at 11 minutes, regardless of what's happening. And we so, asked them to speed them up 70 times, but they, they refuse to do that. So there's a lawsuit that we're not allowed to talk about, but we're suing them uh, in a big way. Well, I hope you guys win some some money from the lawsuit. And yeah, I, we do because that. we went into the future and we saw us winning all the money. So I think it's going to work out for us. That's how Matt got that hair. Is like that's like real. That's real stallion hair. It really that's is great. from the from the ponies of Chincoteague. Uh, and then he had it curled by D. Snyder's assistant, uh, personal assistant, <clears throat> and approved by Dave Mustaine. <laughs> and Matt, I, I love the Sean Kemp uh, like Space Jam parody and his appearance later on in the movie. Or were one of you like a Super Sonics fan? How did that come together? I think that speaks more to Dave's side. You know, even the whole idea of ripping off or just making fun of Space Jam was it came from Dave, and we just had a blast putting it together. And I don't know anybody in basketball, and <laughs> Dave had an idea with Sean Kemp, and we got to get him and work with him. And man, he was just a blast. He was just a blast to work with. He was so much fun. It was like, what What would be the truck stop sequel? You know, you ever go to a truck stop and you see a whole, there's a whole different array of movies that you've never even heard of. Like Bruce Willis has a whole different wing of like any Bucky's of movies that he's done that you can't even get unless you go to a truck stop and, uh, I think we thought Sean Kemp would probably be our version of Michael Jordan or LeBron James for the truck stop Space Jam. I love that. He seems like such a great sport. And Dave, uh, I love the, you know, bringing back Nick Noct and Ur and really breaking the fourth wall. And it worked especially well because I was watching it on my computer. So, so how fun was it kind of playing with the medium, knowing a lot of people would be streaming this movie and, you know, working within those confines. I mean, we lo we we love the whole texting, you know, idea because we were like, I mean, how many times have you seen a crappy movie and like within four minutes you're already looking down at your phone on on a crappier screen, watching something crappier, <laughs> even crappier, and now you're you're multitasking between two crappy things, and we were like, well, someone's gonna look. Even if we make the most awesome movie in the world, someone's going to look at their phone. So why don't we just 
try to make this a multimedia experience that you sign up for. And of course, the Moonanites would just pester the hell out of you. The only, our only uh, thing was our original script was supposed to be hundreds and hundreds of texts that just really brick your phone eventually. But we were told legally we can't do that to people's thousand dollar phones. <laughs> Matt, I, I love the Run the Jewels theme song for the movie. Uh, Killer Mike also voices Boxy Brown, which is a really funny gag in the movie and, and then you know the series with schooly d doing the original theme song it's always had that kind of hip-hop lyrical mc edge to it so how great was it to kind of continue that with run the jewels and them putting together this song oh it was a perfect matchup um <clears throat> we chose him because they have a huge following so we thought if they do our movie more people would see our movie <laughs> <laughs> it was amazing. I think Aqua Team was the first like uh, show to ever have sort of that sort of urban hip hop rappy open. And, um, you know, Killer Mike's got a great relationship with Adult Swim. He's local and he loved our show. So <clears throat> getting them on board was was fantastic. And they just they really uh, came to the table with that song. I wrote yeah, the I... song and gave it to him, <laughs> but they performed it. I so. see. Yeah, I can tell by the hair. Yeah. So, Dave, you know, season 12 was announced, which is so exciting. And, and I'm sure you guys have had plenty of ideas in the interim. So what's that process like kind of boiling it down since it is just five episodes? We have not had plenty of ideas in the interim. I think we just come up with them when we get together. Uh, but I mean, we're recording the third one tomorrow. We're excited about the scripts. They feel very consistent with the show the characters have grown but the, the 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 stories are still just insane and weird and um uh and what was your original question oh was, uh, how much money answer? do you make <laughs> how much money we make a lot lots of lot. money lots so of much money, money. <laughs> you, you know, Matt, you know, when ATF uh, ended initially, it wasn't your choice. So do you feel like getting to do this movie and having another season, does it feel like you're doing a proper send off or, or are you guys hoping that it really is Aqua Teen forever and you can just keep on doing more? So the answer to your question is that we are making uh, a lot. We're making many more movies and we're not probably not just going to get five. We, we uh, expect to get seasons of the show. Okay, great. That's yeah. great to hear. Them. The, yeah. My last question, um, Dave, you know, it, it's been 15 years since uh, Aqua Teen Hunger Force Zombie Ninja Pro-Am came out, and th that game was just an absolutely insane mix of genres, but, like, it, it was very f funny, and the Scott Van Pelt uh, stuff was so hilarious. What are your memories just working on that? Uh, I remember a lot of stuff like uh, us writing notes like after playing the game <laughs> going can we um the the gameplay is not like if i would played that in an arcade i probably would have asked for my quarterback <laughs> i remember giving notes like and then he needs to be able to pull out some nunchucks here and have a fight with uh the frat aliens on the green like a nunchuck fight but then the, the spaceship needs to be able to be shooting lasers the whole time. And I think we got like a one email back that just says, we can't do that. <laughs> we, we worked really hard on those, on the cut scenes and made them sort of funny and consistent with the show. Um, but the gameplay was like, I wish someone would have set my expectations for what the gameplay would have, would have, was like. Uh, b before we went in and had such high hopes about a full contact golf game.